Okay, good morning. This meeting is being conducted pursuant to New York State Open Meetings Law, Public Officers Law, law Section 100 at SEC. For purposes of this meeting, I will designate Julia Lee as our recording secretary. <coughs> today, <coughs> excuse me, today we have before us consideration of the following proposed amendments to Title 53 of the Rules of the City of New York. First, Board Rules Chapter 2, uh, continuing from our, the February 28, 2019 open meeting, to be followed by Board Rules Chapter 3, as continued from the January 30th, 2019 open meeting, uh, and then Board Rules 1-15 and Board Rules 1-01. We'll begin with uh, Board Rules Chapter 2. Just to refresh our recollection, uh, we discussed these at length on the February 28th meeting. We had maybe made a number of uh, su suggestions, or actually we made, proposed a number of changes. Uh, one, as I recall, was in the um, opening statement, uh, the description of the rule. Uh, most were in the body of the rules themselves. Uh, my own reading is that everything that we asked about was done. Um, are there any comments from the board or staff on the draft of the proposed amendments to board rules chapter two? One, one short question about the uh, ex parte communications. Je Jeff, why don't you tell us what page? We're on exhi uh, exhibit three, well, I, I think. I guess we could look at page 18. Page 18. Three. Okay. And, and uh, the merits of uh, where, where the, uh, I guess, the prosecution can talk to, to others uh, here about the merits of the enforcement action, uh, except it being necessary. Uh, is, is, what, what is the time period? Is that? Forever, or is it dur during the during the proceeding? Uh, because obviously, when matter comes back here to discuss penalties and the like, there is a discussion. Is there, is there, not? Uh, there is, though enforcement steps out of the room for for that discussion. So it's for it's for the entire duration of the enforcement matter from the time. Uh, the board uh, sustains its determination of probable cause, and the matter goes to oath all the way until uh, the board issues its order. And we think that's clear from here that it, yeah. Okay, I think so. Okay. So yeah, just to confirm Jeff's question. So there's, there's no concern that there would ever need for the attorney to, 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 uh, to talk to the board concerning the merits of the enforcement action. I mean, the, as I see, the rule is really focused on that. And there's no concern that this, this somehow interferes with some subsequent discussion at that point, the merits are resolved, is that? Right, the merits yeah. of the case would be resolved. The board would have either issued an order or uh, dismissed the case. Okay. And would have had a chance to talk about it in, in group. Well, not, well, we would have had a chance yeah, yeah, yeah. without the, the prosecution. Right. Further questions or comments? The other on, on the next page. We, mm -hmm. we remove the, the language about uh, offers of being confidential. Right. Is, is, is there a harm in leaving it in there so that uh, people know that? Well, one of the. I know the oath rules do. Yeah. Right. There was something in your comment. You yeah. uh, you've told us something about this, but why don't you state right. that? Uh, so the rules of practice of the Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings uh, does expressly address the admissibility and confidentia confidentiality of offers of settlement. Um, so to remove any confusion, um, I think it would be easiest to point a respondent to the to the oath rules of practice, the, since it's the, in there. The, yeah, the idea being, we, we, this is something, you know, that was done throughout these rules with just the idea that if, if oath has rules that address this, uh, uh, then we don't. rather than confuse people with two different sets of rules, um, we should just let oath, the professional ALJs at oath handle handle that. And the, the rule here seems uh, adequate to us. Right, because we talked about this last mm -hmm. time, and on page 17 it has the, pre the preface that says it's going to be conducted in accordance with the oath rules, exactly. except as provided here. Right. So if we have anything inconsistent or somewhat inconsistent, can confuse things. So right. I, I, I agree with removing it. Any further questions or comments? Hearing no further desire for discussion, uh, I call for a motion that the board adopt the recommended amendments to board rules chapter two as the final rule. So moved. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. 
the motion for adoption of the proposed amendments as presented as the final rule uh, has passed. Okay, we now have before us for consideration uh, the proposed amendments to Board Rules Chapter 3, which are the rules that deal with affiliated not-for-profit organizations. Uh, we've had this before, as I understand it, what we have before now, for us now are relatively minor stylistic changes to the commentary and the, and the text and no, substan no substantial or substantive changes, and that is consistent with my reading of the, the comments and rules, um, commentary and the text of the amendments. So, Again, is there anybody with any questions or comments? Jeff? Yes, as I understand stylistically, when, yes. when you made the change... Again, what page are you on? Bottom Sorry. of uh, Exhibit 2, page 4. Okay. Should it read, maybe I'm wrong here, but, but should it read whether more than one elected official huh. serves on the board? Yes, I that's a good catch. So there is a typo. change. I understand yes. what happens. So yes, very good. good. Yes, okay. um, and, and that's something that we can change through the uh, public hearing process. Can we not yes. make a typo correction here and now? Or is that correct? Sure. Um, I, I will confirm that that's the case, okay. and yes. I mean, yes, this strikes me as, that as, yes. as de minimis as it's possible to yes. be. <laughs> um, yes. Conforming no change. Substantive. Yeah. Right. So yes. The deleting of the typo S on, in yes. H. 303H at the very bottom of page and the four. Of an and then, yes, uh, the. And then the adding of the, the S on the serves. So yes, we're, so we're moving the S. Moving the S. Yes. Over. <laughs> moving the S, <laughs> over, the S yes. over about <laughs> six, Moving the S over about six spaces. Yes. And that's uh, hopefully this is about as de minimis as there yes. can be. Good catch, Jeff. Thank you. Um, any further questions or comments or typo co corrections? Um, no. Hearing no further discussion, uh, motion that the board adopt the recommended amendments to board rules chapter so three is the final one. Do I have a second? Anthony, oh. just be careful with the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe I got a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. The motion for adoption of proposed amendments as presented as the final rule has passed. Um, I'm actually wondering, especially since um, Chris is sitting with us right now, we might change the order slightly yeah. and pick up the community board, which is a much shorter ma matter, and I think we can move, we can address it more quickly and then take all the time we're going to need for the gifts, uh, the gifts discussion. So we're going to change yes. the, uh, depart from the Ah, okay. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, we are going to stick. We are now turning to, um, is this board rule 2-101? This is 115. So I'm sorry. Page it's 115. On right. I moved too quickly. Exactly. Board rule 1-115, uh, which uh, I'll give the community words. This is new material for us. And maybe uh, Chris can uh, get, say a few words about what, what we have in front of us. Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, this proposed rule on community boards would address uh, the three core functions of community board service. First, discussing matters at the community board meeting. Second, voting on matters. Uh, and third, chairing community board meetings and committees. Uh, first, with respect to the community board discussion, uh, the board would codify the, uh, the the rule would codify the board's long-standing advice that a community board member may discuss any matter at a community board meeting, even one that could affect that member's private interests or other city service, provided that the member discloses to uh, discloses their interest uh, on the record at the meeting prior to participating. Second, with respect to voting, uh, the rule would codify two long-standing prohibitions. First, a community board member who serves another city agency as an employee, officer, or official may not vote on any matter involving the other city agency. Uh, and second, a community board member may not vote on any matter that may result in a personal and direct economic gain to the member or any person or firm associated with the member. Uh, on this latter point, the rule would define both personal and direct economic gain uh, as well as uh, what an association is. And third, with respect to chairing committees or meetings, the rule would codify the board's advice that no member may chair any meeting that considers any matters involving the member's other city agency or private interest, nor may a member serve as chair of any committee that regularly reviews those matters. 
Uh, the proposed rule uh, would newly define regularly reviews to be three or more times over a 12 month period. Okay, um, thank you. So why don't we do what we've done with uh, on prior occasions and we've gotten rules and kind of go through on a page by page basis beginning with the statement of basis and purpose and, that, or, and then when we get to the rule maybe on a section by section or line by line basis. Um, I had, I'll start with myself, <laughs> I had one question uh, in this statement of basis and purpose on page four of exhibit two. Um, uh, when you're explaining the decision uh, with respect to uh, having a community board member not vote, if the, if the community board member sits on another city agency or is an officer yes. of another city agency, that that person may not vote in any matter involving the members of the city agency. And in justifying it, uh, you refer, say that this proposed rule applies the catch-all provision of Chapter 2604B2, which states that no public servant shall engage in any business transaction or private employment or have any financial or private interest, et cetera. I'm not sure that that actually refers to public employment. So although I don't particularly question the conflict, the, the, the recusal requirement, I'm not sure at all that it follows from 2604B2, which focuses on business transaction or private employment. Sure. Uh, you know, cer certainly the, the, uh, uh, the catch-all provision uh, does not specifically refer to other city employment, mm -hmm. but the board's longstanding interpretation has been to uh, to uh, uh, apply that prohibition to other governmental service and other, in, in, in addition, uh, other city service. I think the idea here, you know, this the, this uh, goes back to the board's predecessor agency, to the Board of mm -hmm. Ethics, uh, held this position, and this board, uh, early on in its existence. Uh, 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 Held held the same opinion, and and the idea behind it is something like, um, you know, you have some amount of private interest in your in your city position, and um, and that this catch-all provision uh, is the right place to root uh, keeping these things these roles separate in city service. I would just rewrite the sentence because, on its face, it doesn't apply the catch-all provision. You might want to put in this is consistent with prior broad rulings interpreting the catch-all okay. provision to apply to a city employment. But, but anybody looking at it would say this is all about private activity. Uh, I'm not questioning the wisdom of the rule or the fact that it's been for practice for decades. It's just I, I think the sentence needs to say a bit more because on its my first reaction is there's nothing in it that would actually pick this up. So it's uh, I think you need to say a bit more. I, I, it's it's not very substantive. But I would, I think you need to just amend that sentence to say this is consistent with longstanding board interpretation of the catch-all provision um, and to apply to uh, other public employment or something like that. Catch-all provision, which maybe with some high dashes, which states dot, 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 and at the end, so that applies to city employment or it applies to public employment. Something like that to make it clearer that this does follow from that, because right now it's not obvious. Let me just refresh. I mean, is, is there a basis in, in law for, 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 for getting to that conclusion? I mean, the Charter does not prohibit uh, people who work for one agency from serving on a community board. I understand there may be conflict, but that's an intergovernmental conflict. Is that a conflict of interest under Chapter 68, or is that more a governmental? I know there's a long precedent, but, but if we're now looking at this uh, afresh, there's um, some, there's um, uh, right. I mean, there's there's throughout the board's history, it's um, it's handled public servants who have two different city jobs uh, in a couple of different ways, uh, and it uh, you know generally has said that when a public servant is you know holding multiple positions essentially as part of the same job. That there, uh, that they can, that there aren't conflicts between those roles, um, but when they uh, have truly separate city positions, especially uh, city positions that uh, have, uh, you know, an arm's length or adversarial uh, relationship, you know, one is making a recommendation to another, or uh, in some way overseeing the other, that those relationships uh, should, that, uh, the, that the private interest you have. In holding to in holding these jobs uh, comes into play 
and uh, because they don't, the allegiance isn't sort of all of a piece. Uh, and so in those cases, the board has told people that they, public servants, city employees, that they need to uh, keep those things separate, recuse when at one position when the other is at issue. Just two points. They're, they're not there ex officio. That's correct. They are there oh. because of the, either their council member or the borough president has appointed them? Correct. That's, yes. And, uh, okay. Uh, are any of them actually on the staff of borough presidents or council members? Occasionally that does happen. Okay, yes. okay so that, that's closer to ex officio, yeah. although not, not officially, officially ex officio. And the rule is only recusal from voting. They're allowed to participate in discussion? That's exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Further thoughts? So what we are overruling of one previous opinion deals with uh, people on the uh, community education councils. That's so we're now overruling the three former opinion that is inconsistent with this with that long standing rule. The, the, the only other thing with in going through the, the different opinions that we've reviewed in opinion number nineteen ninety three dash three you say it's okay for someone who serves on an economic development corporation or a local development corporation to vote on a matter affecting that corporation because he is not personally involved. That seems to be inconsistent with the concept of, of prohibiting somebody from voting on a, a governmental matter. Right. In that, uh, so in, in that opinion, the board uh, looked to the definition of firm and uh, determined that a local development corporation or public uh, benefit corporation was not a firm. Is the uh, city government a firm? The city government is not a firm. No. Uh, and that opinion did not uh, did not look at the potential uh, 2604B2, uh, you know, catch-all uh, 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 interpretation of the catch-all uh, provision that it did for other city service. Um, and, and so this rule here would not make a... You know, would you know would it would uh, apply to you know firms uh, as well? But is that one of the advisory opinions that we're not explicitly incorporating into the rules because they they fall under the general rules? Because it falls under the general rules right. defining firm. Right. Because in footnote four, one of the questions I had, I guess we. We're just we're kind of going off track unless you want to. No, that's good. No, we're you're in the right. are yeah. in the statement of basis yeah. and purpose. That's that's, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, I mean, in, in footnote four in the in the memo, you mm -hmm. talk about the the advisory oh, yeah, opinions yeah. that we're not right. incorporating. Right. So, in terms of the statement of purpose, mm -hmm. we want to make a mention that there are various advisory opinions that we're not. Bringing well, we so we do, um, you know, we do cite uh, in the statement of basis and purpose all the advisory opinions that deal with. Uh, yeah, but, but we're community not. board service, and then we indicate the specific opinions throughout the text of the basis and purpose, the statement of basis and purpose that uh, we either quote from, you know, in in describing what the rule is doing, or otherwise citing to confirm that this is codifying that rule. We don't explicitly say we are not codifying these opinions uh, in the, you know, we we decline to codify these. Uh, uh, so it leaves uh, that one a little ambiguous. It leaves it a it's little a ambiguous, but partly that's because those opinions uh, in uh, are are uh, other than the one that, that that Jeff pointed out regarding the community education council members. All of the other opinions are uh, are opinions that uh, apply Chapter sixty eight in the same way that. Uh, in the same way to community board members as it does, uh, as they do for other uh, public servants. And so it's not necessarily saying that they are wrong or that the board's going in another direction. It's simply, uh, in, in order to streamline the community board rule, uh, staff made a drafting decision uh, as, we were, uh, as we were looking at this, only to, uh, to focus on the opinions that are unique to community board members, so, um, and so it's not they're not we're not necessarily overruling uh, those other opinions that we're not uh, that we're not codifying. It's it's more uh, we're focusing on what aspects of community board service are indeed unique to community board service. In other words, those, those uh, they're not really about community boards. And 
there are just sort of standard interpretations of chapter 68 where the facts really just kind of happen to be about somebody who was a community board member. Um, with regard to the issue of the local development corporation, you know, the, the board just uh, promulgated a rule uh, defining the term other similar entities and the definition of firm and provided a whole list of entities that are not firms. That's one of the entities that was addressed in that rule. So that concept has actually just been codified in a, in a different board rule. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm raising is part of this exercise is notice. Everybody to understand exactly what we're codifying as rules, and I found it very helpful in the memo that you explained that there was a, a group of, of advisory opinions that were not codifying as rules, and it's because they're just redundant of the application of the general rules to community board members. Um, and then there's another opinion that we're explicitly overruling. Would it be helpful for the general public to understand that that's a component of what we're doing? Because when we start off in the statement of purpose, we list all the advisory opinions that are applicable to community board members, but we don't make the distinction that you made to the board. And Je Jeff raised the point saying, well, what about this advisory opinion? And I'm just concerned that when people are looking at this, they might be a little confused. Sure. So we, let me just jump on that, because um, the, right, the, um, the statement of basis and purpose refers to 15 advisory opinions that deal with community boards. It says upwards of a dozen, but I count 15. Five of them are expressly addressed in the develop in the statement of basis and purpose at some length. The other ten don't get mentioned later, and I don't know. Is, do we want to say more about that, or maybe this is just consistent with Fernando's point about yeah. what's the status of the ones that we don't say are expressly incorporated? I I, I don't know what we should be saying, but uh, to the extent that we are, and maybe we just want to leave it all out and assume that the other advisory opinions still remain that everything remains good law until such time as it, it's just not consolidated, or what? I don't know what, you know, what the, whether there's anything to be implied from the fact that we list 15 but only quote from five. Right. Or only mm -hmm. say how five get used in writing the rules, You're so right. I don't know. As a, right, as a result of the change to the charter provision regarding advisory opinions, right, right. you know, none of, none of right. these advisory opinions uh, will be subject, you know, will be in, uh, applicable broadly, right. um, and so in a sense, anything that's not uh, expressly right. codified in rule is not going to be uh, applicable broadly. No, nothing is disavowed; it's just right. we're limited in our ability to use them. Mm -hmm. I don't right, really have I a think, recommendation. I think, I think your your idea is I think I think there may be a sentence there that that okay. that, are, that encaptures what you're talking about. Okay. The fifteen are listed. We've done. Give us a yeah. chance to draft yeah. something. I like just because otherwise there's a, a slight. I think that's what you're getting here. You're yes, yeah, yes, yes, absolutely. There's a disconnect well between, yeah. between our chance. citation yeah. to all these things, but we don't use all yeah. of them, and what happens to the ones that we're not using? Yeah, yeah. Right uh, under the city, <clears throat> under the city council's legislation, yeah. where we're talk, we're we're we're, we're enjoined to okay. codify uh, rules that have that meet that definition, whatever that definition means. I, I, I'm a little confused about what the city council means there, and I think. Uh, alone. Uh, we have to be clear, what hap what is the status of the other opinions that we don't mention that are out there? Are they still, are they good law? Or are they... Well, that just asks for... Should we not print them Yeah, Jeff just wants to Pause. Go. Yeah, I think, as per Ethan's point, it's nothing is really good law anymore. It's all, we're all just trying to build well, It's good, it's just up. not citable. It's just not yes, citable. Right. So, but but we'll, let's, let, we'll, we'll figure out a way to, to yeah. sort of capture the comment that Fernando and, and Richard and Jeff are making and add a little comment Great. Uh, anything else on the statement of basis and purpose before we get to the text of the rule itself? Can we, can we take a moment? Can we um, pause and take a break, please? I was actually wondering whether we could get through this whole rule and then take the break before it gets. Exactly. I, I think we should just pause for a second. You want to stop now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I now uh, call for a motion. Uh, to table discussion of proposed amendments to board rules 1-15 and uh, board rule 1-01 uh, two two, uh, to a future session, to a future public meeting of the board. Do I have a, do I have a motion? Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. All right. Motion is passed. There being no further business for consideration pursuant to the open meetings law, this meeting is hereby adjourned.